So here we have one of my favorite builds that I've done in a long time. Here we have a small form factor build, Micro ATX. It's very portable, very quiet. We're targeting 1080p gaming here. Uh, you can pretty much take this anywhere with you. I mean, ideal if you're going away to college and you need something more powerful than a laptop. This is perfect for that. It has a small footprint, so it's really small and easy to carry. Or you're going to your friend's house or a LAN party. Uh, I mean, you can almost set this up with a, a portable 15-inch screen and you'd be good to go. Uh, so let's go over the part list. Let's put it together. And let's talk about some gaming benchmarks here. So starting off for this, I wanted to do something more up-to-date. So I went with the i3 14100F. Now, this is a quad-core chip, but don't let that fool you. It's a very powerful chip. And generation over generation, going from 12100, 13100 to 14100, if you're on a 12100, you're going to get about a 4.5% uplift in performance uh, going up to the 14th gen chip. Well, let's take a look at some benchmarks that I did comparing this to the 12100F uh, in an eight-game test. And I'll throw that up on the screen now, and we'll go through them. Here we are on Excel. What we did, we did an eight-game test. What we did is we ran three runs under each setting, and these are the results. So I will scroll through this so you all can pause your screens and take a look. Uh, and then I'm going to hop over to some charts. So there you go. All right. So in Cyberpunk, high preset. Uh, the 14100F achieved 128 frames per second average. 12100F achieved 120, so we had a 6.4% uplift. Forza Horizon 5, high preset, 4.7% uplift, with a difference of 10 FPS. Apex Legends, 3.5% uplift. Shadow of the Tomb Raider, 2.3% uplift. In Ratchet & Clank, we saw no change between the two chips. And in F123, we saw a 1.4% uplift on the high preset, a difference of 3 FPS, marginal at best. Um, Avatar, 0%. Um, actually, the 12100F had 1 FPS better than the 14100F, kind of odd. But Far Cry 6, we saw 11.7% uplift, so 108 average on the 14100F and 97 on the 12100F. So, like I said, you know, nice 4.5% average uplift, you know, 11% in some games. Now, for the motherboard, we went with a B660M Pro RS. This is a DDR4 motherboard. Um, it's going to fit nicely in here. Now, this case does support micro ATX, which this board is, or you could do go with ITX as well. But for this, we went with a micro ATX motherboard because, number one, I wanted the fan connectivity so I can connect all the fans up without using a hub because, as you can see, we have very limited space in here. Two, I wanted some, an upgrade path for the future. So, I mean, a year down the line, you could easily drop a 14th gen i5, 14400 in here with no trouble at all. And you wouldn't have to do any other upgrades but switch out the chip. Now, like I said, this is a no-nonsense, straightforward build. So, we're not, we're not cutting corners here. So, for the storage, we went with a one terabyte. King spec 7000, which gets read speeds up to around 7400 megatransfers per second, which is a really fast drive. Now, on this motherboard, you have two M.2 slots, so you can upgrade your storage in the future relatively easy if you choose to do so. Because it's an i3, I mean, you could go with the included box cooler, but the included box cooler, number one, is loud and will ramp up. And we want to keep this as quiet as possible. So we went with a Thermalright Silver Soul 110 millimeter dual tower air cooler. Um, it's 110 millimeters. You can go up to, I think, 140 millimeters on this case. So that leaves plenty of room to go a little further. It's going to fit nicely with the build. It's an all white cooler. And I got to say, it looks pretty nice in this build. Now for the RAM. You know, we're not going 16, we're going 32 gigabytes of RAM. So we're going with simple white sticks of RAM. So for this, we went with the Time Tech Pinnacle Kenduit RAM. Uh, currently on Amazon, 61.99. Got 32 gigs, 2 by 16, CL 16, 3200 megahertz. 
Uh, it's going to serve us pretty well. And, you know, it's going to go better than 16 gig. Now, this case is called the SZD18. It's a micro ATX PC gaming case, case high airflow. Uh, it also fits an ITX board as well. It's small form factor. has a tempered glass side panel, which I have off at the moment. And it only costs $64.99. So, you know, pretty good deal. I think it looks good. All right. So, for the power supply, we're going to need something that's going to power all this. Now, tracking down a white small form factor power supply for under $100. Well, I didn't have any luck, so we ended up getting this uh, 850 watt SFX power supply by Cooler Master. It came in at $124.99. Yeah, kind of expensive, but um, be that as it may, it may be a little overkill for this current bill, but going future proof, you've got plenty of wattage to upgrade. I mean, this will fit up to a 6800, RX 6800. Um, I even fit my RX. 7800 XT in here. Uh, so, you know, plenty of room, but you have to go with a small form factor or you lose all that room on the side. We're going to need some fans for this. Uh, so, for the fans, so for the fans, we went with Thermalright TLP9W. So, these are 92 millimeter fans. Uh, they're much smaller than your standard 120 fan um, because you will not fit 120s up at the top. Uh, because of the motherboard and you won't fit 120s down at the bottom if you go with the micro ATX motherboard because they go right up against the pins and you won't be able to plug anything in. Now, if you went ITX, then you could put two 120s in the bottom. So in this current configuration, we got five fans. We got two up top, two down the bottom, one in the back. I went with two down the bottom because I did use the bottom PCI I lane to put in a Wi-Fi 6 and Bluetooth adapter. Um, but if I didn't put in the adapter, we definitely could fit three fans down the bottom very easily. Now for the GPU, we went with the ASRock 6650 XT Steel Legend Edition. It's a beautiful white and silver card. Uh, that goes nicely with the case. Um, it's a pretty good card. If you're looking for 1080p IFPS, uh, it, it, it's definitely a good card. Now this is a last generation card, so if you had an extra twenty dollars, you could go up to a RX seventy six hundred, which would be good. Or if you had a little more money, you could go with a sixty seven hundred XT or the seventy six hundred XT if you really wanted to. But you'll get better performance out of the sixty seven hundred XT, believe it or not. Um, but if you want sixteen gigabytes of RAM, yeah, I guess the seventy six seventy six hundred XT would be all right. All right, so um, now we've gone over the part list. We put it together. Uh, I, I think it's time to see what we can do and uh, take a look at some of the benchmarks we got out of her. So here we go. So let's. We're going to start off in 3D Mark, and first up we have Fire Strike. And in Fire Strike, we achieved a legendary score of 21,964. It gave us a graphic score of 28,263. A physics score of 17,067 and a combined score of 9,802. That is an excellent score. Next up, we have Time Spy. And in Time Spy, we achieved another legendary score of 9,450. The graphics came in at 10,148 and the C CPU score came in at 6,800. Another excellent run. Okay, moving on to gameplay. Here we are in Avatar on high settings with FSR in super resolution. We achieved on this run a max of 118 FPS, an average of 85, and a minimum of 65. I would lock this in at 80 frames per second and call it a day, and it looked really, really good. Next up, we have Cyberpunk in-game. So here we are walking around the city. We are at high preset, FSR 2 on by default. And we're averaging between 90 and 100 FPS as we walk around the city. And I got to say, at 1080p, this looks really, really good. 
So next up, we have Forza Horizon 5. This is the in-game benchmark. High settings, no FSR, just as is. Uh, we got an achievement score of 151 average FPS. And honestly, I'd lock this in, in at 120 frames and call it a day. I mean, this is great gameplay here. Now, Ratchet and Clank. Here we are at high settings, FSR enabled. And we're averaging between 100 and 120 FPS in this battle scenes. And this is a pretty intense battle scene. And we're getting some great FPS here. Um, again, I'd lock this in at, at 100 FPS and call it a day. Moving on to The Last of Us Part 1. Notorious hard game to run, but AMD seems to do very well on this game. So here we are in a high preset. FSR enabled by default. And in this area, we're getting between 100 and 110 FPS as we walk around. It looks good, and it's another really, really good showing. Last up, we got Apex Legends. Here we are on what I call performance settings. It just means everything's set to low. And, you know, we're averaging well over 250 FPS. So uh, at times, we're hitting the cap of 299. I mean, total competitive shooter here. Excellent showing. Um, this monitor is only 180 hertz, so I would lock it in at 180 hertz and call it a day. So there you have it. Some really good showings on this little system. All right. So really great performance out of this small but mighty PC. All in on this build, we're at a cost of $874.76. That's before tax and shipping. So, eight seventy five. So, with that said, I think we've come to the end of the video. If you like what I'm doing, hit that thumbs up. If you really like what I'm doing, you should subscribe so you get notified when I create cool content. And it really helps out the channel when you do that. And with that said, thanks for watching, and you all have a great day. Bye now.